This Talking Flutes podcast is kindly sponsored by Trevor James Flutes, making life sound beautiful. You can show them some flute love by following them on Instagram at TJ Flutes, Trevor James Flutes on Facebook, and at trevorjamesflutes.com. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Talking Flutes. Now there's nothing that improves my mood more than the start of spring. After months here in the UK, short days, very little sun and more rain than we needed, nature is now bursting with life and I can't help but feel more energetic and positive because of it. There's so much colour and every day you can see changes in the flowers, the trees and the weather. Now, if you've listened to my podcast before, you'll not be surprised that I have already made my way to the golf course a few times. It's a surprisingly peaceful place to be, and spring is more apparent than ever amidst the stretches of greenery. But that had me thinking that actually green was all that I was seeing, and yet it was still somehow a kaleidoscope of colour. We live in a world of colour, and music is no different. The colour green has been linked to more creative thinking, and that's exactly what was happening to me on the golf course. Green is the colour of life, nature, renewal, growth, freshness, hope, rest, relaxation. There are many descriptive words for green. Spring green, apple green, lime green, olive green, pea green, grass green, forest green, many more. So many subtle changes in one colour. So I think there's no better time than now to talk about colour in music. For those of you not familiar with the term colour, it's simply a way of describing the sounds that we make in a more imaginative and creative way. As in nature, colour creates interest and we can use that in our flute playing to help turn a black and white performance into a technicolored one. There are two parts to this mystical world of colour, the abstract and the practical. There are many ways to describe your tone in terms of the colour, the texture or even food. Let me give you an example. You might describe your tone as being smooth in texture like glass or undulating like rolling hills smooth like chocolate sauce, or light as souffle. There's no right or wrong answers here, but the essential component is to use your ears to develop your listening skills. And as those skills improve, you'll be better able to differentiate between your sounds. Sound is the first thing people hear. And if you don't sound good, then nobody wants to listen. Luckily, the flute as an instrument lends itself to a vast array of colour changes. All instruments have a particular colour or timbre, which is how we can tell them apart. And all players have their own individual colour or sound. Many of the skills we work on are technical or mechanical, developing our muscle memory for finger technique or articulation. But using colours or different sounds require you to be more imaginative and creative in the same way that an artist would use their palette to create all the different colours and shades. We all need to paint our music. As with all development plans, it's important to understand our starting point and develop our self-awareness. And by this I mean to verbally describe to yourself what you sound like. Ask yourself some questions. Is your sound clear or unfocused? Is there an edge to your sound? Does it sound open or closed? What texture is it? What image does your sound create? If your sound was a colour, what colour? And finally, if your sound was a food item, what food would it be? Let me play you a clip of the opening of the Griffiths poem and leave you to answer some of my questions. For the moment, let's keep it to colour, texture and food.
that was me playing the opening of Griffith's poem. Now when I listen, I hear a light, airy sound, pale yellow in colour, smooth like silk. So we have a pale yellow silk sound. Let's try another clip. This time, Purcell's Hornpipe. A very short clip, but this I would describe as more vibrant, slightly heavier or denser in sound like chocolate, but rich in colour like burgundy. So we have a vivid, bright, burgundy chocolate sound. Hopefully I've given you some ideas to develop not only your listening skills, but your descriptive skills. The colour of your sound adds expression to your music. Now I teach expression by talking about the four main components of sound, which are colour, dynamic, vibrato and emotion. Together these help the player bring the music to life and communicate the expressive nature of the piece. Together they give freedom of expression. If you'd like more detailed information, then please take a look at my book called The Expression of Colour. Let's talk in more practical terms now about how to make different sounds. Embouchure flexibility and changing the shapes inside your mouth are the main elements in changing your tone and its colour. In fact, most of the changes are internal. It's the combination of harmonics or overtones which change your sound. The more harmonics, the denser the sound, and the less harmonics, the lighter the sound. How do we do this then? Well, speaking and singing use a mixture of vowels and consonants. In flute playing, it's a mixture of vowels and articulation. By changing the vowel sounds, we change the flute sounds. Now there are five vowels in Western language, A, E, I, O, U. And first we need to lengthen those vowel sounds like singers do, and then order them from the most open to the most closed. U, O, R, I, E. Try saying these vowels and then sing them on one note. Exaggerate the shape so that you can easily hear the difference. Singing is such an important part of our musical training and your flute is an extension of your voice. Whatever colours you can create in your voice, you can create on your flute. Experiment on something very simple, like the first five notes of a scale going up and down. With the more open vowels, you need to also angle the airstream very slightly higher and gradually lower this as the vowels become more closed. Another really useful exercise is bending notes, where you play one note and bend the pitch up and down by using your jaw to change the direction of the airstream. And then don't be limited by the five vowels. You could try or, u, er, air, and a. The depth of the colour in your tone is dependent on the resonance or the fullness of your sound. String instruments and pianos have their own resonating bodies, which are part of the instrument. The flute doesn't have the benefit of this, but like singers, we have our bodies, our whole bodies as resonators. Mouth, throat, sinuses and chest all act as resonators. Another way to increase the resonance is to raise or lower your soft palate. Try a yawn. Feel how the roof of your mouth goes up. That's your soft palate. Learn the feel of this and experiment, always listening to the resulting effects. That then is a very short description of how to use vowel shapes to change something in your sound. Remember our three other important components, dynamics, vibrato and emotion. They all play a role in the resulting tone and bring our music to life. I do hope I've given you some food for thought. Personally, I think that the rich variety of your sound is crucial to successful performances, creating this technicolor world. If it's springtime in your part of the world, 
take a more mindful look at all the beautiful colours and textures out there. It's such an exciting time and then bring all that joy into your flute playing. As always, check out our Facebook page, Talking Flutes, and keep in touch via Twitter or Instagram with at Claire Flute or at Flute. I'm happy to chat about any flute topics you'd like me to cover. Until next time, bye for now. Talking Flutes and Talking Flutes Extra are podcast productions by the Trevor James Flute Company. For more information, visit trevorjamesflutes.com.